Most of us struggle with the idea of farming because we feel we do not have enough space for our farming activities. Today we are going to visit a farmer who is doing amazing things with a piece of land that is no more than a quarter on seeds of gold. After a long drive from Nairobi to Kiamunya in Nakuru County, we are here today to learn about small-scale integrated farming. Let's go see how she does it. Hello. Hello, how welcome. Are you? Fine, thank Beatrice, you. Beatrice, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Martin. Okay, I'm yes. Beatrice. Welcome. Uh, asante sana, asante yes. sana. Yes, so what kind of uh, farming do you practice here? Um, I do mainly poultry, uh -huh. but I have underlying other, other, other farming, uh -huh. like uh, dairy, uh -huh. uh, goats, dairy goats, uh -huh. rabbits, uh -huh. and a small garden of vegetables. So you, you've integrated all these farming yeah. options that are available? For yes, you. actually it is integrated farming. Yes. Yeah, and that is that is what it means uh -huh. to have everything mm -hmm. within one one farm. Oh, all right. Yes. Probably you can take us through your farm so that we can see the very many aspects that you have on your farm. When you look here, it is it is a a, a pen for the for a the calf calves. Pen, yes. Yeah, calf pen. How many do you have? I have two. Okay. But uh, because of space, when I've wind them off, yes. I take home okay. or if. Uh, uh, there is any other farmer who is interested? I sell. You sell it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. And the next one is for, uh, it's still for the for the goats, the okay. small ones. Okay. So uh, I don't mix them because they are also milked like the dairy. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. So I don't mix them because they have their own time of uh, being given milk. So you have dairy cows and you have dairy goats. As yes. Well. Yes. Ah. This is Kuma Wiki. Yes. This is Kuma. This, this is, is Kuma hybrid. and very natural. Hybrid? Yes. Now, are you sure these are not those fans that we see in the movies? People are doing this. <laughs> no. These are too big. Yeah, because oh it's gosh. organic. These are organic kills. Yeah. I utilize any small space because uh -huh. personally, uh -huh. I really don't like buying anything. Okay. Yeah, so I make sure my family is well fed. From uh, your own farm? Yeah, from my own farm. Yes. And uh, again, mm -hmm. with Real, natural, it grows the way it is mm -hmm. because I have the manure here, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, you have the manure, but I can see this is coming from... From the slurry, yes. from the biogas. You, you have a biogas yes, uh, I digester, do. a biodigester. Yes, so I the do. slurry is what you, yeah. you pour on your farm yes. as manure. So is everything here organic? Everything. I, I don't even use pesticides even to control any diseases because I have not seen. You've not seen any? Yeah, yeah. And they look very, very, very healthy. Yeah. So this is, to be honest, this is the biggest and the healthiest yes. leaf of kale <laughs> I have seen. Yeah, that, that, that is what it means by organic. I do traditional vegetables. Okay. Yeah, because when you use organic, mm -hmm. Somehow even it sprouts, it sprouts by itself mm -hmm. because the first time I planted, I have not repeatedly done that mm -hmm. because when it is dry, the, the seeds drops and it, 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 uh, grows, it grows again. again. Yeah. So when it rains, it mm -hmm. still uh, grows again. Mm -hmm. But the, the only thing I plant here mm -hmm. is uh, maybe tom tomatoes. Tomatoes. Okay. Yeah, because even if there are seeds which have dropped for the tomatoes, mm -hmm. It, it may not give you a good production uh -huh. like uh, because you we need to really plant the, the right seed mm -hmm. yeah all right okay yeah. i can see you also have some spinach i have spinach mm -hmm. i have 
saga. Yeah, saga. Uh -huh. When I collect these uh, traditional vegetables during mm -hmm. the rainy seasons like this, mm -hmm. so I boil very hot water, I blanch it in for mm -hmm. some three minutes to five, mm -hmm. then I remove, I dip it into cold water, cold water mm -hmm. and then now I pack. Mm -hmm. So when it is dry, mm -hmm. I really don't, I still don't buy. You have no problem yeah, with your vegetables? Yeah. Yes. You still be, take them from the freezer? Yeah. And have them as if you've just taken them from the farm. Yes. Yes, and yes. you also have sugar cane. So, so far you've seen the kales, you've seen uh, uh, beans. Yes. You've seen maize. You've seen uh, denderema. Yes. You've seen the saga yes. and sugar cane. The list is still <laughs> longer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's let's go on and you uh -huh. can see. What do you use the biogas that has been digested? What do you use it for? Oh, mentally we use it for cooking. Okay. Yeah, because um, I have four workers here mm -hmm. and uh, I have children also. Okay. So w what we did in the external kitchen, mm -hmm. I we, we, we put the the cooking gas, the strong one, the juagali one. Okay. So when we are not there, they are using it. Okay. And then we put in the main house also mm -hmm. for, for us to use. Okay. So mainly it is for cooking. Okay. But our, f our our future, the way we see, we want to add value, okay. and we are looking towards maybe um, extending to our neighbors. Okay. And if there is any packaging for biogas, that mm. is where we want to be. That is that is what you you're, you're looking for right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. To be able to put them in tanks and sell them the way they sell the LPG. Yeah, LPG. Yeah, it yeah. is true. Huh? Maybe I can say for the benefit of other farmers uh -huh. because when we started, we had only three. So okay. so that the farmers can really appreciate that mm. even two cows can okay. give you biogas. All right. Yeah, okay. not actually the number that we have now, mm -hmm. but. Uh, biogas, two, two, two cows can help you uh, sort you out in uh -huh. terms of biogas. Right. The biogas meter is uh -huh. installed there. Okay. So it helps you to see how much biogas, biogas do you has have. Been released, yeah, has been released. Uh -huh. So sometimes the, 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 the biogas is too much. Yes. And we just release it. Okay. Yeah, we release it. Otherwise, you'll ruin your digestive. Yeah, yeah. From, yes. Too much gas. Yeah, right. so we release it. That is why we are saying mm -hmm. it is a waste, and mm -hmm. I think we should, we are looking forward to uh, adding value, yes. maybe to our neighbors or, yes. or packaging. Is there any reason why you specifically chose these, you know, the ones that, that you, you planted? So is there a reason why you chose them as the ones you'd want to put on your small farm? Really, I, I just decided because it is a day-to-day -day consumption. We, th that, that is the food that we use. Okay. So because I, I've, I've told you I'm, I'm the person who hates buying things. Okay. So I really wanted to reduce in <laughs> buying. So that, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, creation of wealth means having, you have everything. You, you the, spend, you yeah, spend, you spend less, less out there. And then you get yes. more. Yes, yes. You know, that is what, what, what I do. Silence class! <laughs> they Silence. make more noise! They're making more noise! <laughs> hey! So how many how many chick chicken are these? 250. 250? Yes. Have they already used, how how old are they? These are eight months. Eight months. Yeah. So they've already started the laying, laying yes. eggs. Yeah, they uh, are in their productive stage. So uh, how at how old? Or at how many months do they start laying eggs? Four and a half, depending again on your feeding. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. so for how long will they lay? Uh, I will dispose them at one year, eight months. One year, eight months. Yeah. So okay. we still have a year for them. How is their How is their production so far? Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. So from two hundred and fifty chicks, every day you get at least two hundred and twenty yeah. eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ah, all right. All right. Okay, so I see this is your zero grazing units. Yeah, it is a small zero grazing unit. Yeah, mainly because of uh, the space. That yeah. is why you use the zero grazing. Yes. So how is the milk production? Okay, these animals are not uh, 
we, we brought them from home. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was improved from home. The, the, those, were those, those animals which move around. Okay. So we just went and identify the mm. potentiality of each. Okay. And then we brought because when you sometimes when you go to, to, to maybe you want to buy maybe from technology mm -hmm. from these big farmers, mm -hmm. you are told two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. For so for for a small farmer like me, I mm -hmm. may not afford. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me. We bring this one from home mm. and see if there is any change in production. Okay. So these animals at home, it used to give us 10, sometimes 8 liters per day. Per day, okay. But when we brought them in mm. and make them in a zero grazing, mm -hmm. it goes up to around 20. Double? Yes. Huh, so it tells you when the animals are... Uh, well taken care of, well and, fed. And they use a lot of energy moving around oh, also. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So when they, they are here, they, they, they turn, they get water, they, they, they time every time for feeding, uh -huh. I think, and they have time to relax. Mm -hmm. So we saw it, um, it, is, it is very important mm -hmm. to... If we had gone for a 200,000 animal mm -hmm. we may not have been able even to feed and even to learn mm -hmm. so it was an opportunity for us to learn how to keep or to take care of dairy animals right. so going forward mm -hmm. we may be going for a very high uh, grade even if it is two or three okay so yeah. what what breed are these these are Africans yes. and uh, we have Asians, the other side. Ah, yeah. okay. So I, I see you have very interesting <laughs> structures here. You know, a lot of physics has been applied. You know. So uh, can you probably <laughs> tell us what is what and why it is there? Okay, uh, this is a time I went to Israel. Okay. Yeah, but in Israel, the technology is very high. Advanced. Very mm -hmm. advanced. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I came and explained to my person, mm -hmm. he caught the idea and mm -hmm. is very innovative. Mm -hmm. So he can even uh, show you. In Israel, okay. mm -hmm. when they want to feed, it opens mm -hmm. and it closes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they go out, it closes. Mm -hmm. And um, feeding is more of automated feeding. Uh -huh. So this is just an innovation. Mm -hmm. It is just something uh, I, I, we shared with him. and. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he can do it. Okay, okay. Yes. So when the cow is full, he goes. He goes. He knows. Yeah. He knows he is full. <laughs> he cannot eat anymore. Yes. So he's. So going. you see now, maybe now uh, when it is open, mm -hmm. it goes to to take water and to relax. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then when it needs, that, so why why do you close it in when it's feeding? Yeah, because now this there are time for feeding, mm -hmm. and he may be wanting to do some other things. Oh, and he can't be there to. Yeah, them so every time. he knows the time mm -hmm. until they finish the food here. Mm -hmm. They come and open, and they go and drink water and relax. Ah, yes, all right. yes. Okay, and what what is this other contraption for? Okay, this one is uh, this is molasses. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to now when we were discussing, mm -hmm. he told me even for molasses we can can see how we can uh, well, do it then. Mm -hmm. Kuku, pouring it. Pouring it. What advice would you also have to other farmers as far as some of you know these contractions are concerned? Okay, uh, when you look at uh, where we've come from and uh, what we have done mm -hmm. is we have used local materials. Mm -hmm. um, my passion is that uh, it is not because of me, because because of that particular farmer. Mm -hmm. What I really wanted is for farmers to learn mm -hmm. from, from, from what I do. Mm -hmm. But you see, when the farmer looks at a structure mm -hmm. and that farmer is uh, an, an oncoming farmer, yes. if, if it is complicated, yes. it can even discourage and say, I, I, I cannot afford. Yeah. So I, I would, I, I, we did this intentionally mm -hmm. to, to show that you can use the local available Anything you Anything have, you have. Because I see this is uh, one of the, the one of the toilet bowl yes, system yes. systems. This is just a pipe <laughs> in the chuma. Yeah. Just a piece of wood, some wires, a pipe, and, and a tank. And, and no, this yeah. is just wood. Yes. Mm. So it is very important for farmers so that they don't shy away. I know many farmers they have passion of. Uh, taking care of the animals. Yes. They want to upgrade the animals. Yes. So it is important for them to really understand that mm -hmm. the materials that they have, mm -hmm. it can take them somewhere. Yeah.
so far we have seen uh, Madame Beatrice's poultry. We have seen her chicken and where she plans to put in new chicks. A week old or a day old? A day old. A day old chicks where yeah. she's planning to bring in a thousand of them. They are not yet here but they will be here soon. Tomorrow? Yes. We have seen the way she has put all her chicken in terms of how old they are in different compartments so as to know how long she has with with a certain number of chicks as she always brings in new to phase out the old ones. We have seen rabbits, we have seen the, the, the place where they put the cow dung from the cow shed, sort it out so that it can go to the biodigester. We have seen the tree tomato, we have seen the cows, we have seen innovation at the cow shed. But we are still not yet done. There's still more. Okay. Let's go see. Rabbit. Before the break, we saw incredible use of space for maximum productivity. More to come after the break. This is where you keep your goods. Yeah, this is where we keep our goods. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are the, the, the breed? This is Togenberg. The, the, both of them? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Are they the best when it comes to milk production? I can say it is, it is the best because we are uh, getting two liters. Mm -hmm. And remember, the, the young ones have to be fed because it is it is twins. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. are twins. So after they so, fed, so they use another liter uh -huh. for their morning and evening. All right. Okay. Yeah. So for how long will they feed before? Uh, for three months. For three months. And then I start now weaning them. Okay. So how long will the goats produce milk for? Uh, it from from the time of when they when they have uh, Deli calf down yeah. delivered mm -hmm. it is it goes up to four months so for what reason do you rear your goats uh as you know uh, goat milk is very very high in nutrition uh -huh. especially for children mm -hmm. it is even uh, when you go to hospitals in the pediatric uh, wards mm -hmm. they encourage or they even buy the goat, goat milk. milk goat milk is so, best for the infants yes yes so mm -hmm. for us here at home mm -hmm. We use goat milk, we don't sell. Uh -huh. Because I would really want my children to have that good health. Mm -hmm. And now we sell the, animal, the, the cow's milk. Uh -huh. So um, we, we use it, it is two liters per day, but mm -hmm. it is more than enough. More than enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't get, the, the children don't get any homer. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is good because it uh, improves nutrition. You mm -hmm. see, as much as we are talking now about food security. Mm -hmm. We should really not forget about the nutrition. We can have the food security, mm -hmm. but eating the wrong food. Oh, yes, true. So true. it is good for our farmers also to appreciate that mm -hmm. whatever they are eating mm -hmm. has to have the element of nutrition. So goat milk is good for nutritional value and also immunity. It and boosts immunity. immunity. It boosts a lot. Uh -huh. yeah, Especially yeah. for the young ones. Especially for the young ones. Oh, and, oh. I, and it is for everybody. In Kenya, we have not really embraced harvesting of water. Okay. If you go back to the, the January, February, and March, and the, there was a lot of drought, and the uh, skumas were very expensive. Yes. But now, when the rains are there, you you see water running. It's too much water. Yeah. People are drowning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it is. I think it is good for for us to really harvest water. It yes. is very, very important. Uh -huh. Yeah. So do you harvest water yourself? This, actually, this where we are, we are standing on mm -hmm. is a 40,000 liters we, we, tank. We are, we, are, we are standing on a tank right now? Yes, we are standing on a tank. Huh? We did 40,000 liters? Yes. Because we are magic. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, this water is harvested because we don't get here we don't get tap water. Okay. So we, we just uh, depend on the harvested water. And we have the 10,000 there. Okay. And we have another 10,000 there. Okay. Yeah. So for how long will you use it for before it runs out? Uh, it's rarely do I use this. Uh -huh. When this one is finished, mm -hmm. it rains and it is like, this is like a reservoir for me. Uh -huh. So it is for the dry periods, that is when we really if use If the dry periods are extended. Yeah, but yeah. by the time you finish Sometimes that, when the rains are good, mm -hmm. you may not realize, uh, if, if the drought is two months, mm -hmm. you may not realize that it is drought because we have water. Uh -huh. So that is why I'm encouraging farmers uh -huh. to really, because I have seen the struggle. These are the elements that we've learned from Beatrice. One, necessity is the mother of invention. Two, use 
whatever is available to you to meet your needs. Whether it's space that you have little of, use it to the best of your ability. Whether it's something that you need to be innovative with, use the materials that are available to you to be able to help you with your family. So far we have seen a lot of things happening in just this small piece of land, which I believe is no bigger than a quarter, with an eighth of it with the house and an eighth of it with the farm. But so many things happening at the same space. Fantastic. That's how to make it big with the seeds of gold. Dr. Kingori from Egerton University joins us for pointers on how integrated farming generally works. Probably you can tell us what integrated farming is. Uh, integrated farming is uh, farming where you have both animals and crops uh -huh. and uh, they, they all complement each other. Okay. Yeah. You've uh, gone through the farm, you've taken a, you know, just walked around it. What, what can you say is something that uh, she's done very well, for example, and what can you say are things that she would need to improve on? Uh, one, she has utilized her space very, very well. Another thing she has done so well is innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, from the cows, there was that system where you confine the cows as they feed. Yes. So that there is no bull effect. Yes. That is very commendable. Yes. Uh, also, on water harvesting, mm -hmm. water is a big challenge. Yes. In at least every point where there is water, she has collected that water. And you said the water tank is how many liters? 40,000. 40,000 liters, yes. That is very, very commendable mm -hmm. because in uh, such a system you require a lot of water. Yes. And uh, if you, are, you, you don't have maybe piped water mm -hmm. or if you have piped water then harvesting cuts on the cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I also found a very innovative system of uh, providing water to the chicken mm -hmm. just using open water troughs. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of farmers Maybe if I, that was a, a challenge, mm -hmm. but she has done it so well. Mm -hmm. So that is very commendable. Ah, okay. So once it, uh, the point I'd want maybe a bit of an improvement would mm -hmm. be in one of the houses that's a bit dark. Okay. So uh, the house that is, I don't, know where, 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 I don't know where that, where north is or the, the campus direction, <laughs> but as we move from the entrance getting to where the cows are, yes. that house requires a bit of light. Okay. So you can, uh, from your biogas that you are saying is, exists, other than release it, you can do a biogas lamp and uh, it can light that area okay. at no cost at all. Okay. So that is uh, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, another area is you have rabbits. Yes. If you can have a way of tapping that urine, that urine is money. Okay. You'll use it as a foliar feed. You'll also use it as an insecticide mm -hmm. because you are doing organic farming. Yes. So just get a food who can be able to do an improvement on uh, your rabbit structure mm -hmm. such that you can be able to collect the urine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can use it for foliar feed and also insecticide. What are some of the key aspects or the key areas that uh, uh, Madame Beatrice can improve on? I don't know what you are doing with the sweepings that you get from the poultry unit. It is for the animals. We feed to the animals. Okay. With it. Yeah. So she's pretty doing that well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, all she needs to do is collect it, uh, dry it, and she can mix it when making her her, her daily rations. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there can be also value addition on milk. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can be trained on uh, making yogurt, you can also make the, the, the mala, you can also make mulusik, mm -hmm. and that also adds value. Mulusik is, is a traditional... Yeah. Is a traditional mala. Yeah, yeah. traditional mala. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, that way it, it improves the shelf life, mm -hmm. it also improve, it improves on the value. Mm -hmm. The goat's milk, there's a lot of promotion on the use of the goat's milk. Mm -hmm. One, there are several advantages. Mm -hmm. The first one is goat's milk is very easily digestible. Mm -hmm. And for people with digestive system challenges, mm -hmm. that is the best to go for. Okay. Uh, it also has a big advantage in the sense that uh, the, the pricing mm -hmm. is, is quite high. I think it's because of supply and demand, mm -hmm. that is the market forces. Mm -hmm. uh, the current price is going is uh, 80 to 100 shillings per liter as compared to cow's milk that goes for. 40 shillings. 40 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's a big advantage. Yeah, yeah. Another advantage of the goats is that you, because of the small size, mm -hmm. uh, it has been proven that what the feed resources for one cow mm -hmm. are enough for five goats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what this tells us is for a farmer to get that constant supply of milk, mm -hmm. 
uh, other than maybe have that one day the cow, mm. you can have the five. Five goats. You have one advantage in the sense that you just diversify the risks. Mm. If your one cow died, you are gone. Yes. If you have the five goats, one well died. <laughs> you still study, have four more. For, for study. Yes. So there is also with the cow that mm. at one time you dry it. Mm. Or there will be no, you not be milking. Yes. But with the five goats, you can have at least three in the milk yeah. to dry. Yes. Yeah. So there's that flow of milk all through through the year. Say one cow, one cow gives at least 20 liters yeah. a day from the ones you have, and you sell each uh, a liter at 40, 40 shillings. 40 shillings. So that's 800 shillings. And for the goats, you have one producing at least two liters. Two liters. Yeah. And if you have five, that's, that's ten. ten liters. Mm -hmm. Ten liters times. Times a hundred, one thousand shillings. So you, with five goats, you have a. It's profit. equivalent to one. Uh, the one cow. One the, cow. the one cow. Mm -hmm. Even in terms of the amount that you would receive. Huh. Interesting. Five goats, equivalent one cow. That is uh, farming mathematics. Farming mathematics. Kingori, tell us, in integrated farming, which are the combinations that work and uh, which combinations don't? Uh, using the example of this farm, mm -hmm. like the integrated rabbit production and uh, vegetable production mm -hmm. works very well. Okay. This is because like, uh, the droppings from the rabbits will be used for, as manure for the vegetables. Yes. The urine can be used as foliar feed and also as insecticide. Yes. Uh, a combination again of the chicken and cattle mm -hmm. is also very good. Mm -hmm. The chicken droppings are used for animal feed. Okay. This is, it's a very good protein source. Yes. Uh, the other combination is like what we have for the dairy cows. If she wants to venture into fish farming, yes. that can also be very good. The slurry from the biogas unit or direct cow dung mm -hmm. can also be put into the fish ponds. As food for the fish. As food for the fish. Uh -huh. And this increases the stocking density mm -hmm. and uh, that is also money. So what are some of the challenges really or disadvantage of this system? Probably we can start with you, Madam Beatrice, with what you've faced so far. And then uh, Dr. Kingori can give us some more that, that might exist. What I can say is that in integrated uh, farming, there are more, more, more advantages mm -hmm. because you find that uh, most, most of the products and uh, the byproducts are utilized within the farm. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe I can talk of challenges in terms of poultry mm -hmm. because poultry, chicken are very sensitive animals. Okay. Um, it, the production per day is affected by any, any stress or mm -hmm. any disturbance. Mm -hmm. Like now, where we are, across there is a railway mm -hmm. so sometimes when the railway the, the train is passing with a lot of uh, oh, loads nice. yes so mm -hmm. it you will see the the, the difference so uh -huh. it, it is affected by any disturbance uh -huh. when you continue maybe feeding you may realize that uh, if there is no consistency of feeds mm -hmm. you can even see by the production you mm -hmm. can see and uh, the chicken even you, you start seeing cannibalism, mm -hmm. you start seeing mm -hmm. a lot of um, you, a change mm -hmm. yeah, in the, in the poultry. So mm -hmm. it is very, very sensitive and uh, everything has to be taken care. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing for even farmers to note is that uh, the program for vaccination is key. Mm -hmm. So that they, they do their part and then now they, they, the natural things now Will, will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, the major thing is vaccination because diseases are there. Mm -hmm. There could be an outbreak. Mm -hmm. But if you, in case you have not vaccinated, mm -hmm. then you become the first victim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is possible you can lose the whole flock because mm -hmm. of diseases. True, true. Yeah. That is majorly on poultry. That and is majorly on poultry. Yes, what about, the, you know, things like the rabbits, the goats, the... Okay. Um, um, for the for the rabbits, you just con control in breeding mm -hmm. because when they they breed within themselves, mm -hmm. they, they they even die. So you just control. It depends. Maybe you sell mm -hmm. you sell to, to to your neighbor, and your neighbor keeps you the 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 other one. Before you get into integrated farming, mm -hmm. there is always the main enterprise. Mm -hmm. 
and the main enterprise is from from what you get as maybe complementary inputs from the main enterprise mm -hmm. will guide you into what other combinations you go into. All right. Okay. Like on this farm, the main thing was pottery. Yes. It gave birth to uh, dairy yes. because they found that, that there was that window yeah. of the chicken droppings getting into uh, dairy production. Yes. Then one thing led to another. Yes. Uh, from the cows, there was cow dung. Yeah. That now brought in the biogas. Bio yes. The biogas has slurry. Yes. The slurry now brought in the vegetables. The vegetables. So it becomes a chain reaction. Yes.